Hi everyone. I hope that you're getting settled in and enjoying CO2 at home so far. Thank you so much for tuning into my session today on state of the industry marketing in 2021. Before I go ahead and introduce myself, here is a brief overview of what we'll be covering in today's session. One, we'll be going over the current state of the digital marketing landscape and what that looks like in 2020. Uh, we'll be going over the digital marketing necessities versus the nice to haves for your industry specifically. Uh, and lastly, we'll be going over digital marketing tactics and channels to keep an eye out on in 2021. Before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to go ahead and introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. Um, one of my favorite podcasts is Girls Gotta Eat, um, which if you haven't listened to it, I have a feeling you may not be their key demographic, but whenever they have a new guest or a new speaker on, they always ask them, what gives you the right? So essentially, what makes you qualified to speak on the subject matter? I figured I would go ahead and answer those questions for you today. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Rachel Betterbin. If you're thinking better bit is a weird last name, you'd be correct. It was completely made up at Ellis Island in the 1800s. Um, I am the vice president of digital marketing here at Colmarch. So I would bet a good amount of you guys tuning in today know me or have worked with me in some capacity because out of the eight years of experience I have in the industry, uh, seven of those have been here at Colmarch. And in my time here, I've done a little bit of everything from SEO to PPC to conversion optimization to kind of business strategy, project management, conversion optimization. Um, I've worked with hundreds of service-based business businesses like your own. Um, I've done PPC for a while, so I've managed over $10 million in ad spend. And I always joke that I was, I was destined to work in PPC with a last name like Betterbid. But essentially, as the VP of digital marketing here at Colmarch, it's my responsibility to lead the digital marketing teams as well as our overall strategy to ensure that we are consistently getting good results for our clients. So let's jump right in and talk about the digital marketing industry and what that looks like. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to be going over the nitty gritty details that you as a business owner don't care about, like what changes Google made to their algorithm or, you know, what the top ranking factors are. Uh, hopefully you employ a marketing agency or an in-house team that can keep track of, you know, the nitty gritty details like that for you. Um, instead, I want to kind of go over just high level what the digital marketing landscape looks like um, and more from an economic standpoint. So before we go into that, I wanted to give a quick refresher on just what digital marketing is. I'm fairly confident that if you are savvy enough to attend CO2 at home, you are probably savvy enough to already know this. But as a reminder, digital marketing is a, a pretty broad term used to um, describe marketing efforts that happen on the internet or on electronic devices. So anything from content marketing to video marketing to social media marketing, SEO, PPC, display ads, so forth. Uh, people are consuming digital content on an hourly basis. Um, so it's no surprise that digital marketing has become the main way that businesses are advertising themselves in the last five to 10 years with more traditional means of advertising like billboards and print ads and TV ads um, essentially dying out. And a big reason for that is the growing use of smartphones which seems a little bit like, duh, right? Like this isn't news to us. Millennials, Gen Z, we have been addicted to our phones, you know, for years now. Um, but even though it seems like an obvious thing that smartphone usage is growing, 2019 really was the first year that um, it met 50% at where desktop traffic was. So in the past, desktop was exceeding mobile and was the number one way that people were using the internet. And for the first time in 2019, mobile um, traffic reached 50%. So kind of met desktop halfway. Um, Across multiple, study, multiple studies, data has shown that people spend an average of three hours a day on their smartphone, which if you do the math, that equates to 45 days a year that we spend strictly on our phones. Um, that is insanity, and if it doesn't disturb you, I don't know what will. Um, I think it's important to note that a global pandemic certainly hasn't helped with these numbers, you know, with people being in lockdown, staying at home, nothing to do, um, app time, app usage, phone screen, time, all of those things have increased. So I expect these numbers to be even higher in 2020. Um, and like I said before, as disturbing as this is, it's great as a business and as an advertiser. Um, it creates the situation where smartphone usage is going up, mobile searches are going up. In general, you know, demand for the US home service market is increasing every year. And so you have this situation where people are using their phones more and more to find really fast solutions and to engage with businesses just like yours every single day. So how do consumers actually find you? We know that they're looking. 
again, seems like a given, right? But as consumers, we use Google a lot. Um, Google holds the number one spot for the most visited website in the entire world. Um, on average, there's 63,000 searches that happen on Google every second of the day. And if you take a minute to actually process that, like how much that actually is, another 378,000 searches have already happened. It's no wonder that as advertisers, we're a slave to Google. You know, it's not just your pest control company, it's not just your lawn care company, it's not just me and my team as advertisers. Everyone, all industries, we're all slaves to Google. From an economic standpoint, this is what the market share looks like when it comes to revenue being spent on search advertising in the US. Um, the numbers show it as well. As you can see, Google holds majority of the market share at about 73%, um, with Amazon coming in at number two with 13%. So that's a really big gap there. Um, fun fact, up until last year, Microsoft, which encompasses Bing, was actually number two, but this is the first year that Amazon has surpassed them to become the second largest ad platform for search in the US. So as you can see with these numbers, there is clearly no competition when it comes to the beast that is Google. And for good reason, not only does it offer the most opportunity because there are 63,000 searches happening every second, so many people use Google throughout the day, it's just such a, a concrete part of our, our habits. Um, but aside from that, it also does generate really effective cost, co really cost effective leads for service companies just like your own. Here at Colmarch, the average cost per lead across Google, across both Google Ads, Google Local Services Ads, and organic, just Google altogether, um, is about $45 in the last 12 months. Um, we really like to aggregate all of our, our client data and try and find trends, figure out what channels, what tactics are kind of the best with lead generation, generate cost-effective leads, um, and Google's definitely one of them. You know, I'd be willing to bet that most of you would pay $45 to um, generate a lead. So if you haven't already, I do recommend you download our marketing benchmark report, um, which you can find on our website. There's all kinds of stats like this for your industry specifically. Um, so definitely take a look at that if you haven't already. Anyway, so what does advertising look like beyond just search? As of now, we've been talking mostly about search, but um, it's apparent that Google dominates the search arena. So maybe that's not that fair to talk about. Let's look and see what it looks like, what um, the market share looks like for ad revenue across all digital marketing, not just search. Um, as you can see, Google's still number one, not shocking. Um, they've got much lower market share, about 38%, um, and Facebook isn't that far behind with about 22%. And keep in mind that Facebook includes Instagram as well. Um, and then Amazon, Microsoft, and Verizon make up the rest. Are you surprised that Facebook and Instagram are that high up? Because I'm definitely not. Aside from being addicted to our phones, being addicted to using Google, uh, we as a society are also addicted to social media. So the average person spends three hours a day on social media across both their mobile phone and desktop. Um, and Facebook is, by a landslide, the most used social platform in the US. They've got about 223 million active users, while Instagram only has about half of that at 112. Um, so Facebook and Instagram being number two when it comes to digital ad market share, definitely checks out. Facebook generated about $70 billion um, from advertising in 2019 with 30% of that coming from Instagram. These numbers show that clearly a ton of money is being spent advertising through Facebook and Instagram, but does that mean it's a necessary marketing tool for your business and for your industry specifically? This brings me to my next section. Let's talk about what the digital marketing necessities for your industry are. And don't worry, I will get to Facebook and Instagram later on. Let's talk a little bit about triangle pest control. Many of you already know who Triangle is, um, but for those of you who don't, Triangle Pest Control is Colmarch's sister company, so we're both owned by Donnie Shelton, who is our CEO. Uh, they started in 2006 in Holly Springs, North Carolina, which is about 25 minutes outside of the Raleigh area. Um, and in the last 14 years, they have grown to be one of the top pest control companies in the entire state. Um, they've had really consistent, really stable growth during that time and really have grown their business strictly through digital, which in 2020 is like, Okay, that's not that interesting, but in 2006, it definitely wasn't the norm and it was much more of a rarity. So let's take a look at and see what their annual revenue has looked like in the last five years. As you can see from this chart, they, like I said, have had consistent, stable growth. This is kind of what everyone wants to see, right? Making more money the following year. Um, let's take a look at what their digital marketing spend has looked like in the last five years. 
This isn't as much of an upward trend as the revenue. You'll notice that 2018 was actually lower than previous year years, and that was because they acquired another company that year, so they had to scale back their marketing. But in general, if you kind of focus on the last two years, 2019 and what is projected for this year, um, it is up significantly compared to previous years. Triangle has focused, like I said, their digital marketing efforts or their, their marketing efforts primarily on digital marketing um, since they've been in business and, and specifically driving leads through SEO and PPC. That has really been um, where they've spent their time and their resources. And thus far, they've had really great success with it. Colmarch has worked with Triangle for a large majority of that time and our main kind of marketing strategy has been gaining what I would call search engine repetition and dominance. So what does that actually look like in real life? Let's take a look. Here is what the results page for Pest Control in Raleigh looks like. This is gonna be Triangle's main service and their main market. Um, as you can see, the, the results page has gotten so long, we can't see the whole thing in one screenshot, but this is the top part, which is essentially the paid ad section. So as you can see, TPC is showing up twice in this section alone. Um, one in the Google local service ads, which are the top three, um, and then underneath that as a traditional pay-per-click ad, which displays underneath the Google local service ads. As we scroll down and we enter the organic section of a results page, we see the map section. Triangle is showing up number one there, um, as well as being the number one organic result below that. Um, this shows that Triangle is showing up four times on one page, which also happens to be the very first page. Um, that's a lot of real estate to take up on a search engine results page. It's probably what the young people would call hashtag goals. Um, I've never felt so old in my life. Pretend I didn't say that. Um, so how does one gain the ultimate kind of search engine repetition and dominance that I'm talking about like Triangle? For one, if you aren't running Google local services ads, you're already falling behind, to put it pretty bluntly. Um, these ads rolled out in the last one to two years, depending on your market, and they get about 14% of all clicks. Um, they're the very first thing on a page, so they're the very first thing that someone sees when they search. Um, and when they're present, um, they get 14% of clicks. And when they're present, they actually take away clicks from the PPC ad section. Um, so next up, PPC ad section, you need to be running PPC ads with a healthy competitive budget. Because like I said, when local service ads are present, they actually get less clicks. And it makes sense. The first thing on the page is probably what's going to get the most clicks. Um, but these still do get 11% of all local clicks. The next section is the local pack section, which is the map section. Um, in order to show up here, you have to be in close proximity to where the user is searching. So if you are 30, 40, 50 miles outside of where the user is, you're probably not going to show up when they search um, unless every other business is that far out. But this is a really important part um, of the search engine results page. It takes up 30% of all clicks. Um, so more than the paid sections combined. Um, it's not a surprise, you know, the importance of reviews has grown so much throughout the years. I think most people want to look at reviews before they even go to a website. It's kind of the initial qualifier because if you have bad reviews, I don't even want to go to your website. Um, and so it's not important that it's not surprising that a lot of people click on these. Um, and while these are mostly organic search results, I will say that you can run ads in this section. You can't really control when they show or how often they show or what position you show in. Um, as you can see with this screenshot, no ads are showing, so that happens a lot as well. But there is um, a feature in Google Ads where you can run ads um, in the local pack. Lastly, the organic results section, the SEO part of the digital marketing machine. Um, this portion gets majority of the clicks, as you can see, 45% and continues to be one of the best investments for your marketing dollars. Um, you need to be coming up on the first page. Specifically, the first three spots get majority of clicks. I think they get about 90% of the clicks. Um, there's a, an SEO joke for you. Where do you bury a dead body on the second page of Google? Um, in all serious though, all seriousness though, Google continues to roll out new advertising platforms that are, you know, getting pushed to the top of the page, but SEO remains the biggest traffic generator. Um, and so for those of you who wonder, is SEO dead? Is it still important? Yes, it absolutely is. I'd be willing to bet that if you go in your Google Analytics account, it's probably the biggest um, traffic generator for your website as well. So. If you are not already dominating in these four areas and all of your key markets, if maximizing the opportunity here on a search engine is not already your focus, then it absolutely needs to be. Because these are the absolute biggest marketing necessities for our industry. 
like I said before, if you're not running local service ads, you're already falling behind your competition. And if you're not maximizing your PPC spend or every year you're trying to scale back on your SEO spend, you know, more than likely you're leaving opportunity on the table for your competitors to scoop up and eventually they will outgrow you and outsell you and leave you in the dust, um, which we know we don't want to happen. And a big part of why I want to talk about these necessities is because I work, you know, with a lot of business owners who are consistently asking, you know, what's next in the marketing world? What else should I be doing? Where should I be spending my money? You know, when they aren't even remotely close to maximizing the opportunity, um, in these existing areas. And I think everyone's just always looking for the next best thing. And so this is just to reaffirm to you that these areas are important and these need to be your focus and focuses. And these are the necessities. Um, in 2020, only 20% of our clients came significantly under their paid ad spend, meaning they had a goal to spend this much money and they couldn't spend it because there wasn't enough opportunity, not enough searches happening for them to hit their budget. 80% um, of our clients had no problem hitting their budget and likely had opportunity to spend even more. And so it's a rare thing to max out the opportunity on a search engine. Um, it's a rare thing, but it's not impossible. So what happens when the opportunity on a search engine can't sustain your business's growth goals? Let's go back to Triangle Pest Control because I promise I had a point to get to with them. Let's look at those TPC numbers again, but this time let's look at it from a percentage standpoint. This is what the revenue growth percentage has looked like in the last five years. So as you can tell, it's definitely slowed down. Five years ago, they were growing at about 30%. This year, it's projected at 7%. Um, if you're a business owner, you know that this isn't abnormal, the more money that you make. Um, in comparison, let's look at the percentage of revenue that is being spent on digital marketing in the last five years. Do you notice anything? It's gone up. Um, it might help if we look at the percentages together. So the green is going to be the year over year revenue growth percentage and the black is going to be the percentage of revenue going towards digital marketing. Do you see what I'm getting at? For the last two years, even though Triangle is spending significantly more of their revenue on digital marketing, they aren't growing as much as they were previous years when they were spending less. So 2020 is the first year where the percentage of revenue being spent on digital marketing is higher than the percentage of revenue growth expected. Um, that's a mouthful in layman's terms. They're spending more and they're growing less. So obviously that's not an ideal situation. You don't wanna be spending more and more increasing your budget to grow at a lower rate. Um, I do wanna say that I don't think that this is the norm for our clients. I think Triangle is again a rarity in the sense that they have been investing heavily in digital for well over 10 years and have been ranking number one organically for almost all of their markets for a couple years now. So when you're ranking no, number one, you're at the top, there's nowhere else to go. You know, When you're ranking number eight, even going from ranking number eight to number four, you you will see more traffic increases just from making those those jumps in, in a few spots. Um, when you're already ranking number one, there's not as much opportunity. There's not as many leaps and bounds to make. Um, so they're not only maximizing their PPC spend, spending as much as they possibly can within their cost per lead range. They're not only ranking number one, they're not only showing up four times on a search engine results page, they're doing all of this. And ultimately this year it's proven that it's not enough. It's not enough to generate the leads and the sales that they need to facilitate the growth that they want to see. And so as a business, what do you do when this happens? Um, you have a few options, none of which I'm sure are going to be surprising to you. Um, if possible, you know, you can expand to new markets if you feel like you have fully saturated the ones you're already in and there's no opportunity, not enough people are searching for you to spend what you need to spend to acquire new customers, you can go into new markets. You can also offer more services in your existing markets um, and try and upsell your current customers on those services. This is something that Triangle has also done this year, um, opening up Triangle Lawn Care, hoping to get their pest control company customers also on their lawn care program. Uh, you can acquire another business and acquire their customer base, whether this is in the same markets that you service or in a new market. And then lastly, you can try and diversify your advertising and marketing and pursue new ways to reach people, which brings me to my next section. At this point, we've established that the SERP dominance, specifically in Google, is going to be the biggest necessity for the home services industry, but what about other marketing channels? You know, maybe not the necessities per se that, you know, 99% of people haven't you know, maximize the opportunity there. But for the people that have the budget and have the means to pursue, you know, other digital marketing channels, which are the ones that are nice to have? For Coal March, 2020 was a year of testing some of these nice to have channels um, and seeing how they stack up. 
So we tested Yelp ads, new advertising platform, which they had rolled out in the last year or so. Um, they had modeled it to work similarly to the Google ad search network where you can bid on specific keywords. It's a cost per click bidding method. You can spend as little or as much as you want. Um, this is different than what they had normally had, which was mostly a fixed cost monthly rate to be a sponsored profile. Um, so very little control on wh when your ad is showing up, how much you're spending. You kind of have to commit to a certain price. Um, so I think that they have that still, but they also have this new um, option to bid more on keywords. Um, we also text, tested Nextdoor local deals. If you haven't heard of it, Nextdoor is um, a social app that is hyper local and basically a way for neighbors to see what's going on in their neighborhood and communicate with their neighbors. Um, like any other platform, they wanted to figure out how they could monetize their app and so enter advertising options. Um, local deals are their first offering for local businesses to advertise and you can essentially, as a business, um, post a special discount or an incentive and target you know, specific zip codes, specific neighborhoods. Um, Nextdoor won't share their user or their revenue numbers, but they have said that they've seen a huge 80% growth in users since the pandemic hit. So more and more homeowners are using Nextdoor. Another thing that we tested more of this year was Instagram and Facebook ads. Um, we obviously have talked a lot about these platforms, and as you know, they're both rapidly growing in market share, um, growing in ad revenue. You know, more and more small businesses are, are incorporating this into their marketing strategies. Um, it's not necessarily a new platform for us to test. We have run ads on here for our clients for you know years now, but um, this year we intentionally put more budget into these areas to kind of test its effectiveness with lead generation. Lastly, something else that we tested more of this year was video ads, specifically YouTube ads through um, Google's video network. Um, you know, YouTube isn't just the go-to destination for uh, video content, but it's also the second most visited website in the entire world behind Google. So obviously a ton of people are using Instagram. It's a great way to get your brand in front of people. Um, similarly to Facebook and Instagram, this isn't a new thing, but this year just putting more money um, into these different channels to test their effectiveness. So. What did we find? Great question. Um, we found that across all of our clients who put money into these different platforms, all of these combined generated less than 5% of their overall lead count. So that tells us from a volume perspective, these channels are likely not going to be groundbreaking, you know, a groundbreaking lead gen tool for your business like SEO and PPC is. Um, and a big reason for that is because when it comes to the home service industry, which is a needs-based industry, User intent is everything. Someone needs to have a bug problem in order to purchase a pest control program. You know, someone needs to have a yard in order to buy lawn care. And even if they have a yard, they may not want to shell out the money to buy a professional service. So at the end of the day, in order for someone to become a lead or a sale for your business, they have to have a need for what you're selling. And their intent may not be to buy lawn care or pest control when they're browsing through Instagram or Facebook or they're chatting with their neighbors on next door or they're watching you know, a funny video on YouTube. It's not the same kind of intent that they have when they go to Google and they search for an exterminator or they search for a lawn care company. So just because they can't generate leads, you know, at the same rate that search advertising can, does that mean they're valuable? Like, uh, is it worth it? Yes. Absolutely. I'm not trying to say that they have no place in marketing because they're not going to be, you know, a huge, huge lead generator for you. Um, I don't think that they will take the place of Google anytime soon. I still think majority of your budget should probably be going to Google for the user intent reasons I just talked about, but I do still think that they are extremely valuable to your overall marketing strategy. Omnichannel marketing is a relatively new concept, very similar to multi-channel marketing um, that aims to provide customers with a seamless experience no matter where they are or what device that they're using. Um, so the operative words here are multi-channel and seamless experience. Um, it's not just about having visibility on all these different channels, but it's about having continuity. So the modern customer is no longer conf Fine to a single platform. This means that you know people are potentially interacting with your company in so many different areas. Whether it's you know browsing social media or getting an email from your company or visiting another website and seeing your company's ad in the sidebar or seeing your ad on Google. You know whatever it is, there's so many different ways for someone to come into contact with your brand. And so you not only want to have visibility in all those different areas, but you do want to send a consistent message in all of those areas as well. Um, essentially, the modern customer is no longer. Fine to a single platform and your marketing shouldn't be either. 
So with that being said, having a diversified marketing strategy um, that is also consistent in messaging is really key in 2021. Um, so this includes utilizing those digital marketing necessities that we already talked about, like SEO and PPC and Google Local Services, but also incorporating other channels like Facebook and Instagram and video advertising um, and Nextdoor and things like that. So what are the specific channels that I think you should keep an eye out for in 2021 and invest more time and energy, you know, if you have maxed out your opportunity um, elsewhere? Um, starting out Amazon. Amazon has rolled out all sorts of new advertising features in the last couple of years, um, one being more traditional display ads um, that display in the sidebar of the site or the app, and you don't necessarily need to be selling a product in order to be advertising here. Um, you could be a brand that just wants to drive traffic to your website. Um, the cost is significantly higher than traditional display advertising through, say, the Google Display Network, and so right now, I don't really think it's a great option for small businesses. I think that it's really built for big brands to utilize. Um, there's really crazy ad spend minimums of thirty to forty thousand dollars a month, which you know the average small to mid-sized business probably can't afford that. And even if they could, wouldn't want to you know dump that much money without knowing um, exactly how it's going to perform for your business. So, as of right now, I don't think Amazon offers a great advertising platform for your business. But I think in the upcoming years, Amazon is going to continue to try and compete with Google for that market share, as, as if the 2019 numbers weren't evident enough. Um, so I think that they are going to find more and more ways to make this more accessible. Um, you know, the traffic's already there. The eyes are already on Amazon. People are using it left and right to buy anything and everything. And so the opportunities there and, and the advertising will naturally follow. Next up, let's talk about Instagram story ads. Um, in the last three years since they've launched, they've become a huge part of what has made Instagram so insanely popular. Um, there's about half a billion people that use Instagram stories every day. Um, so they are a really important channel for brands to advertise in conjunction with traditional feed ads. Um, I personally look at Instagram stories these days more than I look at my actual feed. So I think um, that's a lot of people and you know, it's a great way to get your brand in front of people in different areas. Um, several different areas throughout Instagram. So if you're not already running Instagram story ads, I definitely recommend incorporating that into your Instagram strategy um, if that is already part of it. Speaking of Instagram, I'm sure by now you've heard the term influencer, um, but if you haven't, it's essentially someone who has a sizable following on social media and can essentially influence or affect the purchasing decisions um, of whoever's following them. So influencer marketing is actually one of the top um, fastest growing online customer acquisition models um, in 2020 and more and more companies, more and more big brands are, are really hopping on the influencer marketing train and for good reason. Um, brands that sell products are specifically doing this. It's a lot easier to track um, product sales with special coupon codes and so forth um, to track ROI. But for home service companies, it's not all that common right now. I, I think it's something definitely worth looking into. I think it can help boost general brand awareness. I think that it can boost trustworthiness and brand advocacy. Um, I, I think it might be hard to find an influencer that wants to partner with a lawn or pest company, but this is something that is going to continue to be a thing as the years go on, unless Instagram and and Facebook and all of that, you know, magically disappears. But um, I think it's worth exploring in this day and age. And I think that we're going to see more and more different variations of industries um, hopping on the influencer marketing train. And if you have the time and energy to look into this, there are Instagram influencers in all parts of the country. In almost every state, you can find someone that at least has, you know, tens of thousands of followers. Lastly, I wanted to talk about Facebook Messenger. So obviously we've talked a lot about Facebook during this presentation and Messenger is a really big part of why it's so popular. Um, it's becoming even more popular for consumers to talk directly with businesses on Facebook Messenger. And you know they've introduced all kinds of new um, features like auto responders and chat bots and things like that for businesses to utilize in order for them to give real-time information to several customers at once. So you know, aside from utilizing these features, which I definitely recommend that every company does. I think that simply monitoring Facebook Messenger and making it part of your daily process and your CSR's daily responsibilities is going to be really key. Um, I think 
it, Facebook Messenger in itself can be a lead generator tool in a way that people are going to communicate with brands and that's just gonna continue to grow. And so making sure that your communication is as consistent as possible here with your other methods of communication, making sure you're a professional, um, you're responding in a timely manner. I think all of these things are things that you should definitely incorporate into your process in 2021 if they aren't already. I'm unfortunately running out of time here, um, so I do want to recap everything we've talked about today and just kind of leave you with my five key takeaways. Um, number one, Google still dominates the search and digital marketing landscape, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. In my opinion, SERP repetition is number one necessity for home service companies. I think that this is the best way to grow your business. I think that, you know, with everything we've talked about with user intent, there is not going to be a more qualified potential customer than someone going to Google and searching for the service that you provide. So with that being said, I believe it's wise to continue to invest in SEO and SEM. Other marketing tactics and channels like Facebook and Instagram and video ads, you know, they're not going to generate the amount of leads um, that SEO and SEM do but they're still a really important part of executing an omni-channel marketing strategy. And so it's definitely something that needs to be part of your overall marketing strategy if it isn't already. Um, I'd be remiss not to mention that Colmarch can help your home service business achieve this kind of SERP dominance and help streamline your omni-channel marketing strategy. It's, you know, it's some, something we're really good at. It's something we're really passionate about and we know your industry almost as well as we know ours. And um, we've got years of experience helping companies just like yours. So if you'd like to learn more about how we can help you specifically, definitely find a Colmarcher and we'd be happy to chat with you. But in general, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something or at the very least walked away maybe with a different perspective. Thank you.